And uh, what I want to do is just kind of give you some context. Uh, think of it as kind of a state of the brand kind of thing. So we've got some momentum, we've got some growth. So the idea is, uh, as we come to market with the Regal, what environment are we coming to market in? Uh, as it relates to Buick specifically. So with that, we've had um, we've had some growth at Buick, right? Calendar year to date, uh, retail sales are up 14%. And that's coming off three consecutive years of growth. Actually, if you go back to, from, to 2009 and 10, 11, and 12, uh, our sales were up 80% at retail, 76% uh, in total. So uh, good recent momentum, and that's coming off, again, three, three very good years. And it's all based on a cadence of bringing great product to market. And I'll get into some of that detail in, in a minute. We're really proud of the work we do um, on the marketing team, but we know that it, at the end of the day, it comes down to consistently bringing out great products true to the DNA of Buick. And um, another indication above and beyond just kind of, uh, uh, you know, the, 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 the numbers, the sales numbers is the idea of what, where is that growth coming from? And you can see that 44% conquest number. And what that means is that of people that, that purchase uh, a Buick, 44% are coming to us from something other than another GM vehicle there. And for us, that's another indication that we're bringing more people into the Buick family, people that maybe hadn't considered us in the past. And that's a direct reflection of bringing out great products, whether it's next generation of products that already exist or new products into the market into new segments, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But, so that's another indication that we've got some momentum and some growth. Um, and then strong in, in some of the coastal markets. So that's just to say that there's some parts of the market that traditionally we haven't been that strong in and we're showing growth in those markets as well. Again, the idea of a new person uh, in recent times considering Buick and buying Buick. So a new person in the Buick family. So what do we like about that? I mean, um, as I get into some of these, uh, into some of the specifics on the cars, think about it in terms of uh, the Buick garage. You, in the past, or in the recent past, it was hard to, to, to imagine a Buick garage. Um, now that we've broadened our portfolio and we've got things that meet the needs of different life stages of people, you can envision a Buick garage. You can envision a garage where someone has an Encore and an Enclave, or a Verano and an Enclave, or a Verano and a Lacrosse, and it meets the different needs of the people in the house, right? So it can be a daily driver, it can be a, a vehicle they use for vacations, it can be a, a, a vehicle for the youngest person in the household, and a vehicle for the oldest person in the household. So the idea of a Buick garage really encourages us as well, especially when we talk about long-term prospects for the, for the brand. So let's go through one of the, each one of the cars. I'll just touch on them briefly, but this will give you a sense of the cadence of product that we've really, um, that's really been the driver of that momentum. And, and if you think about Verano, with the introduction of the Regal and the Regal GS that we're here to talk about today, the Verano is now the oldest vehicle in the Buick portfolio. So I'm going to ask you to think way back to when we launched the Verano, way back to last year, right? So early last year, we had a few sales in December of 2011, but we really launched the Verano in 2012, and that is now the oldest vehicle, less than two years old in our portfolio. So a fresh new car is the oldest in our portfolio. And Verano was really a, four -way, a foray into what we call white space, which is kind of that space in between the mainstream compact cars and the high-end luxury compact um, cars. And it's a position that, you know, with luxury execution, amenities, uh, attention to detail in terms of the materials we use and things like that, and then um, bringing it in at a value in the luxury space, and it's been very successful to us. Uh, uh, county year to date sales on the ground are up 18%, so that's a good sign. And then um, if I think about Conquest specific to Verano, it is kind of, as I like to say, the leader in the clubhouse, the leader right now. 52% of the people who buy a Verano are coming, are coming to Buick, coming to Verano for something, from something other than another GM vehicle. So again, a new person into the Buick family. So now you think uh, Enclave. Enclave was the first vehicle, think back to 2007 actually, it was the first, first vehicle to get the kind of modern, progressive design language at Buick, and I think set the tone for the Buicks to come. And uh, uh, again, also, it has been very successful for us, but we built on that success just recently here, so we introduced the Verano, and then late last year we, entered, we uh, updated, enhanced, refreshed the Enclave, um, and if you think about it, maybe 
three key buckets. It's really uh, spent a lot of time on on the exterior, uh, not the least of which was some signature lighting on, on the front and the rear, so updated, enhanced the, the exterior. On the interior, um, really a focus on using great materials and updating the interior to make it even more progressive, and more fresh. And then um, the third bucket is really te technology, so we spent time making sure we have the safety technology and infotainment. So technology almost split it up into a couple different buckets. And you're going to hear that theme as they talk about some of the other, uh, other cars and crossovers as we go as well. So the Enclave um, calendar year-to-date sales up 18%. And uh, what's nice and a good indication that people in the market, that consumers are seeing the value in terms of the luxury execution is um, we're selling about 90% of our Enclave in the upper two trim levels. So plus, again, an indication that people are seeing the, the luxury value, if you will. So then, on the heels of Enclave, we came out with the Encore. That hit the, hit the road, hit the market in February of last year. Um, we sold about uh, just under 23,000 units, so we're off and running with, with Encore. And that was, if you think about that term I used before, white space. If you think about a place in the market that nobody else is serving, and Buick is first to that part of the market, that makes us feel real good, because you haven't heard about that uh, from us in the, in the, in the recent past. But the idea that we're first to market with a small crossover with luxury execution and then a focus on value within that luxury execution. Nobody was really serving that need. We came to the market with it and Encore's really um, proved, again, a great success by virtue of sales. And then if I think about it, what's driving that success? I mean, it appeal, it's, it's appealing, it's got safety, it's got quality. And if I think about all these, those three individually, from an appeal standpoint, we've got some some uh, secondary source validation of that. J.D. Power Appeal, um, the Encore was number one in uh, the subcompact segment, so a good indication that consumers love it. And we also have our own internal proprietary data that tells us when we go survey early buyers, what do you think about the, the Encore that you just buy? And the, the, the reviews have been raved, if you, if you will. They've been really, uh, really good. So from an appeal standpoint, it's hitting the mark. Um, if I think about it from a quality standpoint, um, it was an IIHS top safety pick. Um, the Olga Drive version was, was um, uh, an MCAT five-star rating. Uh, so from a safety standpoint, check. And then from a quality standpoint, this doesn't often happen in the market, but in the first year in the, uh, for a vehicle in the market, but Encore was uh, number one in the segment at J.D. Power IQS uh, initial quality survey. So, Quality, safety, appeal, Encore checks all those boxes, and, and uh, it's, as I said, we're off and running. So again, in review, Verano, right, uh, beginning of 12, Enclave near the end of 12, early 13, the Encore, and that brought us to the lacrosse, right on the heels of the Encore. So if the Enclave was the first vehicle to, to have that modern progressive design language at Buick, the lacrosse was the first on the sedan side. That happened in 2007. And when that happened, it was a seismic shift as it relates to lacrosse. ATP shot up 40%. Um, import Conquest tripled uh, with that new lacrosse. And uh, over time, it's become one of only actually, actually seven cars that transacts over 30,000 and sells over 50,000 a year. So that was a good indication we were on the right track. And then earlier this year, earlier, uh, just recently here, uh, we, we refreshed, enhanced, updated the lacrosse as well, so built on a very strong formula. The same buckets that I mentioned to you on, on Enclave, the same attributes we really focused on. So we refreshed the exterior, added some signature lighting front and rear, as well as some other enhancements. Um, I won't get into the detail now, but then on interior, uh, uh, a focus on uh, simplifying the interior. We spent a lot of time on what's called the center stack area, making sure that they're the radio, HVAC, that area was easy to use from a human-machine interface standpoint and really paid a lot of attention to the materials we used, made sure they were premium, soft touch in all the right places, the trim pieces that were just um, at the highest end uh, of the luxury scale. So interior, exterior, and then I mentioned safety, or I mentioned technology on the, on the Enclave. Same thing uh, applies to lacrosse, so we spent a lot of time spending uh, adding technology in the areas of safety and, uh, and infotainment. So safe, if you want to think about safety, um, it's really a surround, 
it surrounds the vehicle in safety. So we added things like forward collision alert uh, in the front of the vehicle. If you want to think of uh, side blind zone alert, lane departure warning, lane change alert on the sides of the vehicle. And then you think about the vehicle in the rear, rear camera standard and uh, uh, real cross traffic alert. So we've got you surrounded in safety. The, really the, the latest safety equipment that's out there, lacrosse has it. And then infotainment, the latest Intel, IntelliLink system that gets you nat things like natural voice recognition that makes it a really easy system to use. So focus on interior improvements, exterior improvements, and then safety uh, in the form of te uh, technology in the form of safety and infotainment. So, and, then, and, and so the lacrosse is often the lacrosse is off and running as well. So now we'll follow the lacrosse, which is the, for the reason that we're here today, which is the Regal and the Regal GS. And if you want to think about the Regal and the Regal GS and its place in the portfolio, think about it this way. Um, if you've got the two bookends as it relates to really fulfilling what is in most people's mind, what we really focus on every vehicle as the DNA of Buick, beautiful, quiet, comfortable, and I mentioned that purposeful technology, and we optimize the performance. And then with the Regal, that slides in with that same DNA, and then we've added a little bit of fun and performance and sportiness, you know, spirited performance with a base powertrain that's uh, 259 horsepower and 295 pound-feet of torque. Just a lot of fun into the, in, into, the, um, into the portfolio. So that's the role that Regal plays. And I think it's a perfect complement to lacrosse and, the, and, and to the Verano, and it really adds to uh, the Buick portfolio in the sense that bringing new people into the Buick family, the Regal has a real opportunity to do that. It's been doing that already, and the new ones that you've driven uh, this morning, and you'll have some more time with it, we think it's going to do that in speed.